Hello everybody and welcome to Amy Nolte Music. My name is Amy Nolte and today I'm going to teach you about tritones and tritone substitutions. I'm going to keep things pretty easy today. I want everybody to feel like they've got a grasp on what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to get very technical. I just kind of want to show you about the magic of the tritone. That's about it. It is magic. You, the way that it works is like magic. So let's talk about it. Come to the piano with me. So let's define a tritone first of all. Tritone has different names. It can be called the tritone, it can be called um, an augmented fourth, or it can be called a diminished fifth. In an octave, if we're talking about C, C to C in the key of C, it divides the octave in half. As you can see, if I walk my way back through, that is the middle note. It divides it in half. Sometimes it can also be um, found by, uh, by whole steps. One, two, three whole steps, right? In very early music, they even called the tritone, they labeled it as dissonance. Nobody wanted to hear it. They thought it sounded like the devil's music. In fact, I think they even called it uh, something in Latin that meant like the devil in music. And it was, it was kind of forbidden. Um, nobody wanted to hear it and they called it dissonance. But as music moved along, they started to realize how integral it was to modern harmony and how, for instance, these two notes are the third and seven of D, right? If you want to play a dominant chord that's going to lead you to G major, these are the notes that are going to take you there. So in, in classical music, it started to be used for nice dissonance and then resolution. And, and of course, we use it all the time today. All right, now, here's where the magic comes in. Check it out. So I've just said that these two notes are the third and seven of D7, right? Of a D7 chord. So this is the third, this is the seven. Cool, right? Now, what if we just flip-flop them and we put the C on the bottom? All of a sudden, we can think about it in another way. This could be also the third of A flat seven, and this could be the seven. See that? Listen to them. And they're very different sounds. Look at that. So we've got a tritone that when you flip it around can be the third and seven of a different chord. D7 and A flat seven, right? Now, what's the relationship between D and A flat? Uh-oh, it's another tritone. This is why it's magic. It's just kind of a cool little phenomenon in, the, in our 12-tone system of Western music that it happens that way. So, so that's why we can use substitutions. Anytime you want to use a D7 chord and go to a G major chord, for instance, you can just, instead of playing D7, you can keep this third and seven and just substitute your bass note. You see how that goes? And then it's an A flat seven chord that just takes the place of a D seven chord to get you to G major. So they both sound good. We're more used to hearing that. I'll, I'll resolve it this way. That's, that's what our ears are most used to hearing. But I'll put the A flat on the bottom and it doesn't sound that crazy. birthday when we come around to the dominant seven chord it's a C7 here it is so let's let's add a tritone substitution to happy birthday we'll make it the hippest happy birthday there ever was so what is that what is the tritone on a C7 there it is right there right so 
do we do? There's two ways to look at it. You can look at it like this is the third and seven. Let's swap it and have it be the, th the third and seven this way and figure out what it what is it the third and seven of. I think the easier way to do it is to just figure out what's a tritone away from C. Well, we've already said it's an F sharp, right, or a G flat. So that's what it is. Okay, there's our seven and three. There's our third and seven. Now let's see how crazy it would sound if we put that in the end of Happy Birthday. I don't think it's so great in Happy Birthday. What do you think? I think it's too crazy. <laughs> but I think the reason it sounds so bad is because there is this G in the melody, and that's, I mean, gosh, it's a minor ninth away from the tritone substitution, so that just sounds awful. What if there was a different note in Happy Birthday? Oh, what if it was this? What if it went, Happy Birthday to you? How would that sound? Happy It's, it's pretty much that melody note that makes it makes us never ever ever want to do a triton substitution on happy birthday but let's talk about something else what if we talk about a train you must take the a train to go to sugar hill way up in harlem what if we take that g7 chord there's our third and seven what's a tritone away from g it was d flat so there's our third and seven on a G dominant chord. We flip flop them, D flat, there we go. Let's see how it would sound. Here's our two, D minor, two. And then instead of playing like a normal kind of voicing that I would play for a G seven chord, which would be like this, I, I'm still gonna play the voicing. I'm just not gonna put the G on the bottom. I'm gonna put the D flat on the bottom, okay? So we're gonna go two. Sugar Hill way up in Harlem. Now I'm going to take it a little step further for you. Now you know that these two notes are also the third and seven of D flat dominant. Here's a cool thing. The most common voicing I would play over a G dominant chord is this one with the seven and the third and the nine and the thirteen. I told you I was going to stay pretty basic. This moves beyond basic a little bit, but but it's cool. It's too cool not to show you. So the most common voicing that I would play for a G7 chord is this. G on the bottom, you've got the 7, the 9, the 3, and the 13. That is what I call a vanilla kind of voicing. I mean, it's hipper than playing this, right? That's what you would play in like classical or rock and roll or something. So, I mean, we're hip, but it's still vanilla. It's not super exciting because we're not altering any tones. We don't have a sharp five or flat five or sharp nine or flat nine. So this is where it even gets more magic because the relationship between our tritones gets even cooler right now. So we're talking about G7, right? Here are the vanilla notes in G7, but the moment that we decide to substitute this bass note and make it a D flat seven chord, so we've already said the third and the seven, those remain the same, that they just switch, right? But now, look at, look at this A, which was a really vanilla note in G7, it was just the nine. It's the sharp five of a D flat chord, and this note that was the 13 of the G7 chord is the sharp nine of a D flat seven chord. So we keep the third and seven, we add the sharp five and the sharp nine. And that's like one of the hippest chords there is. So we move from something very plain sounding to something very hip sounding. That's as far as I'm gonna take it. I could talk about scales and, and take you through more tunes where we use it, but I'm just going to take you through one more tune so that you can understand that all you have to do to make a tritone substitution is take that tritone and change the bass note. You change it from a G to a D flat, and there's your tritone substitution. They're interchangeable. 
and they work anytime you've got a dominant chord that's leading to a major chord. Let's talk about a minor tune in, in a slightly different genre. Um, I can show you an easy way. Uh, we're in the key of F minor. We've got the song Masquerade. Now, here is a place where we should just have, we've got a G minor chord, we should just have a C, like a C altered chord. We should have a C7, there's our, our third and seven. Sharp the nine, we sharp the five. Okay, check it out. What if we take that C7, we don't play any of those altered notes. All we're gonna do is go, Looking for words to say. There's our G minor. And instead of doing this, we're gonna all we're gonna do is go a tritone away from C, which is there, and we're just gonna play that with the third and seven and see how it sounds, okay? Looking for words to say. Sounds great, doesn't it? Heck yes, it does. So it works over minor two fives and over major two fives, or minor dominant to uh, to tonic resolutions, or major do uh, dominant to tonic resolutions. Let's do one more major song. Let's take the girl from Ipanema, because this one actually has a tritone substitution written into it. F major, G seven. Here comes our 2-5, G minor. Now what you would think would happen would just be a C7 chord, right? But it doesn't happen. Joe Beam didn't write it that way. He uses the tritone substitution. So there's a 3rd and 7 of the C dominant that we would normally have, but he puts an F sharp on the bottom. sound nice and it's just written right in there. It's easier to add a tritone substitution after you've already played the melody of the song and you're in and you're in the solo section and the person who usually decides to do the, tri the tritone substitution is the bass player because if I'm the piano player and I'm playing a G7 chord and I, I'm just gonna play it like that and and the chord is G7 all the bass player has to do is just decide that they're gonna play that D flat note instead of a G note. They just make that decision and it becomes the tritone substitution, right? They're in charge of the bass note. Most of the time I'm not playing any bass notes. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of a bass player's game, really. And, and in that way, they decide also whether my chord sounds really vanilla and sweet or really edgy. As soon as they change their bass note from that to that, my chord changes flavors. So I think that's kind of a fun, fun game. You know, we've got going on between piano players and guitar players and vibe players, whoever's doing the comping and the bass player. We're, we're in charge of these color notes, but they can actually determine what kind of color it's gonna be. Sounds so pretty, so easy, over G7, but now it sounds so mean, dangerous, <laughs> and it's all in the bass player's hand. And sometimes, if I, if I want to have like a major, like a bigger voice in my comping, you know, sometimes you can do it, the, the piano player can just, can go ahead and just knock out the tritone substitution down here and play some bass notes. But if they do it very often, the bass player probably won't like it very much. But so most of the time, you know, you're just playing your voicing and the bass player is just gonna throw a surprise at you like that. But it's cool, it's all cool. Alternately, it works the same way if I wanted to play the cool voicing on G7 instead of like this. If I wanted to play a, a G7 that has a sharp nine and has a sharp five. So we've got our 2-5 coming around, and I'm trying to sound all hip with this voicing. If the bass player decides to do a tritone substitution in that case, 
Now all of a sudden these notes become the 9 and the 13 and it's a much more vanilla sound. It can happen both ways. I'm sorry, comping instruments, you are usually not in control of that. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. I did say that I was going to keep it very beginner-ish and easy and then I kind of moved out of that a little bit. But hopefully you stayed with me. Hopefully you understand the magic of the tritone and the tritone substitution. Go ahead, talk it up in the comments if you guys have more to add and um, I'll make a more complicated video someday about it. But for now, this should give you a handle on it and add a little color to your playing. Thanks for watching Amy Nolte Music. I'll see you next time.